Hello and welcome back to Kingdom Business Podcast. It's your host, Lorena Whitley. Today I am talking about give your life to Christ. How many out there are ready to surrender their lives over to Christ, to just give him your life, just to live that life that he told you to live, totally, completely, fully his, okay? Who who wants to live that life today? And I will be going over a few scriptures for you today, giving your life to Christ. And this is the most precious gift you could ever give yourself, um, a birthday gift, Christmas gift, whatever gift and whatever season is, whatever season it is, this is the most precious gift that you can give to yourself. Now we're going to go into prayer first. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, I come before your presence right now, giving you thanks, thanking you for another day that you let me see that was not promised to me. Thank you for waking me up, God, this morning to be in your presence again. It is just an honor to be in your presence this morning, God. Lord, I pray that you will watch over the viewers right now, God. Touch in a mighty way, God. Lord, if there's anyone that needs to be healed on today, God, I pray that you will heal in a mighty way, God. I pray that you will set free in a mighty way, God. I pray that you will deliver. Just heal your people on today, God. These are your children. Touch in a mighty way, God. And let them get saved. Let them give their lives over to you. And, and, and know that, God, you, you love them. You love them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let's get into the podcast, the word on today. Kingdom Business. Hallelujah is the name of this, of the, is the name of the podcast. Kingdom Business. And we must be, excuse me, y'all. We must be about our father's business, okay? Time is winding up. It's time to get right with God. Okay, so we're going to go with Romans 10, 9 through 13. If you will, please turn to Romans 10, 9 through 13, and we're going to read that. And y'all, excuse my those I have allergies and sinuses and all of that, but you know what God is working on it, so I'm not worried about it. But just... Uh, don't worry about it. Let's see. So, uh, we're going to go into it. Let me uh, turn my flashlight on so I can see better. And it says, let me see if I can find it real quick. Ten nine. Remember, ten nine. Through 13. Because if you confess with your mouth that the Lord, that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with, let me make sure I'm staying on the right, in the right area. This, these, this, it's kind of small, y'all. It's kind of small to see. Uh, let's see. For with the heart, one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. Hallelujah. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. Amen. For there is not. There is no, I'm sorry, no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. Praise God. Okay, and it says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they 
to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. My, my, my. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Israel say, I'm sorry, Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed that he has heard from us? So that so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. But I asked, have they have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all earth, and their words to the ends of the world. But I asked, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation with a foolish nation. I will make you angry. This is then Isaiah is so bold to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. My God. Oh, this is the remnant of Israel. But we're going to get into this a little bit more. We're going to dive into some more scriptures on today. What did I do? Oh, I pushed the wrong thing. Uh, okay, so we're going to get back into some scripture on today. And we're going to go to John 3.16. And this is where God so loved the world. Listen, he is showing and proclaiming his love for you. Okay. So it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Oh, my goodness. So after you have given your life over to God and, and you listen, this is the scripture that we learned as children. This was probably one of the first scriptures that we learned for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And then we're going to go jump down to Romans 12 and 1 which says, I appeal to you brethren, I mean therefore brethren, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which is your reasonable your reasonable service but your spiritual worship so listen we must worship God in spirit and in truth and so these listen this is the commandments of God we need to worship the Lord and I'm like worship the Lord on a daily basis if you want to grow in Christ Jesus you must have a relationship with him you must commit yourself to him. You must live the daily life and get into your word because the word is the sword and it will protect you from the enemy. Okay? So we must learn the scripture and we must put it down in our hearts so we won't sin against God. Romans 6.23 It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So it says in Jesus Christ our Lord. So don't you want that? You know, when this life is over, you get to have eternal life because you confess your sins. You live in for the Lord Jesus Christ. You live in for him. But before we um, do that we have to be close we have to we have to before we can get to God we have to go through Jesus remember that we have to go through Jesus to get to God okay so confess your sins on today you know um let's go to first John 1 and 9 make sure that you are writing these scriptures down as I'm putting them out because you want to go read this for yourself you know, it's not enough to just go and listen to somebody. You need to read the scriptures for yourself. This is what God wants us to do. 
We need to be spending time with him as well. It's all right to fellowship. It's all right to go to church. We go there for strength. We go there, you know, to build us, build our spirits back up and all of that. It's like an energizer, you know, but we must spend time alone with God and get into his presence and seek his face. Okay, so 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So go to him, confess your sins, repent of your sins. And he said he is faithful and just and will forgive your sin. Okay? I really don't think that this, I think this needs to be really preached a lot. Giving your life over to Christ Jesus more. That needs to be preached more. But whatever the Lord has for you to say, speak it, but speak it in truth. Okay? 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. Each one must give as he has dedicated his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver and be a giver. Hallelujah. Be a giver. Let's give back. Let's give back, especially uh, to God's house. Let's give back. But also, let's give back to the community. Let's give back to the community. Let's give back. Because we know that there's people out there that need help. There's people out there suffering. And we need to be there. That is what, what our calling. We should be here. Be there. Um, let's go to the next one. Second Corinthians. Uh, well, I already read that one. Luke 6. Three and I'm sorry, six thirty-eight says, "Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, uh, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be uh, measured back to you. So give cheerfully, okay? Not grudgingly. Give cheerfully." And it will be returned to you. Hallelujah. 100 fold I've heard. Um, so give. You know. And it don't always have to be money. You can give your time. Somebody might need somebody. To, to, to just sit down and talk to them. They might have lost a loved one. And they just need you to sit down. And hug them. And talk to them. And let them know that. The Lord still loves them and wrap you, wrap them in your arms. Okay, so listen, it's not always about financial giving. We can give finances. If we have it, God gives it to us. He, he says, be a blessing, okay? So when he blesses you, be a blessing. Don't hold everything to yourself. When he gives you his love, you know how to love people. Share that love. Share that love. With somebody else as well, okay? Um, sometimes, like I said, it could be just a smile. You walk into the grocery store and somebody might not even be smiling. They might look like they're down. And you just smile because smiling is contagious, you know? And then they'll smile back because I'll never forget we were riding down the street one time and this lady had the biggest frown on her face and I said, I'm going to make her smile today. And um, I was like... I. The way she was looking, I was like, Lord, this is going to be a challenge. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I gave her one of the biggest smiles. I was like, I mean, I gave her a cheese, y'all. And she just smiled back. And it touched my heart in such a way because you never know what you've done for somebody just by smiling at them. You know, I'm like, she it might, I'm pretty sure it brightened up her day because she probably was going through something and needed that smile. So practice that one today. Say a kind word to somebody. Smile. And you know what? When God tells you to give somebody some money on the street, do not question that. Do not question it. Do not give it a second thought because, listen, it's coming from God. He's telling you to do this. If you have it, give it. 
I remember a preacher saying that there was somebody at the uh, gas station and um, he was asking for some money, right? This preacher is one of the biggest, the mega preachers up there, right? And so he went in to get some, you know, get changed. To, and he was testing the guy first. We don't need to test anybody. God gave it to you. Why can't you give it back to give it back? Because he said, for the least you do for them, you're doing it for me. So we're doing it for Christ Jesus. We're doing it for him. But anyway, so he went in the store and uh, he tried to get change because he asked the guy, you know, um, can I just buy you some food or something? Because the guy asked for money. He was trying to see if the man wanted just money or did he want food, right? <laughs> so he tested him. And so the guy was like, he want food. So he went in there um, to get the change to give the guy some money, right? And um, so he didn't, he didn't, um, the man didn't have change, y'all. So the preacher had to give him. The whole hundred dollar bill, y'all. Yes. God had to make you give that. If you got to give it. Because you know why? Because God gave it to you. And he, and, you, and you, listen, all we're doing is giving back to God. It's not always about giving in the church. Yeah, give in the church. But he wants you to help those out there in need as well. Okay. And it didn't make sense to me for a person of that stature, a person of that big, a person of that magnitude to not want to give just a hundred dollars when your bank account probably is full. But you know what? I'm going to say this. The Lord giveth and the Lord also can take it away. So as surely as he blessed you, surely he can take it away. So we need to think about that thing. When we get up there, and this is why I say, Lord, keep me humble. Keep me humble because I don't never want money to be over my life like that. Never. I don't want it to be over my life like that. If you give it to me, Lord, I know it's not just for me, God. It's not. It's because it's for you. I'm giving it back to you, God. So know that on today. This one lady was so hurt, y'all, because she went to the church for some help and could not get it. I'm trying to understand what, what's really going on right now. If you can't help one person, they come in from the ch come in and ask for help. And this young lady really needed help. And she was crying because they literally, you can say they turned her away. And she said, well, what do I have to do? Go out here and sell my body just to get some money because I need help and y'all won't help me? Do you know that hurt my heart to the fullest? Because I have been done that way and sometimes I have. I had a church to tell me that they were going to do something for me and they didn't follow through. If you're going to be living this life for Christ Jesus, live it for real. Live it for real. Don't live it for the money. Because money shall pass away. Money shall go away. But the free gift of Christ Jesus, oh my God, is the best gift that you really can have. Living the life for real for Christ Jesus. Having that heart for people out there. Mm, mm, mm. And so I just, that just hurt my feelings. I mean, I know she was really upset. She was hurt. But you know what? We have to leave that in the hands of God. And that's one of the things that I'm like, I'm not going to get upset about it. I'm not going to do that because, you know, God has brought me so far. And I'm trying to live the life for him for real, totally. And so I cannot be affording to get upset over what they doing in the church and not doing in the church. Um, so if you wrapped up and tied up in money, Maybe the pulpit's not where you're supposed to be. And I'm just big and bold enough and going to say it, okay? Because that's not what it's about. It's about being out there doing what God told you to do, living the life that he told you to live, and being for real in Christ and, and bringing souls in. 
He said, with love have I drawn you. Love. You know, that could have been a soul saved. But instead, it was a soul turned away. Because you turned away from her. And that could have been an angel sent from heaven. See how you going to treat that person. Y'all need to think about that. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's go down here. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. My God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Remember to write these scriptures down as they come to you. Okay? And go read them for yourself and let it penetrate your heart. And also share the word of God with somebody else because we need to be sharing. Sharing is caring. So let's share out there today. Okay? All things were made through him. Okay? And without him was not anything made that was made. Okay? So he made the heavens and the earth. He made everything. Okay? Know that on today. And that was John 1 and 3. Now let's go to Revelations 3 and 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. My God, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. So when you hear the Lord knocking at the door, don't turn away from him. Don't just go the other way. Don't harden your heart. Open up the door and let him in and let him sup with you. Let him clean you up. Let him wash you. Hallelujah. He said, I will come in. I will sup with you. I will eat with you and you will eat with me. Oh, my God. And then, then the other one, uh, Revelation 20. We're going to go to the Proverbs 19 and 17. Whosoever generous, whosoever, I'm sorry, whoever is generous to the poor, lends to the Lord. See, this is what I was just talking about. You give it back to Jesus. Hallelujah. Remember that on today. When he tells you to give that hundred dollar bill. Or he tells you to give more than expected. And then the young man was so happy when he got that hundred dollar bill. He was like, oh my gosh, he was just so grateful. Sometimes people in the church are not even that grateful. Okay, think about that. So and it says and, and that hundred dollar bill felt to him probably like a thousand. Okay. It says, um, so whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his deed. So he will repay you. You're going to get double for your portion. You're going to get more than what you gave out. It should return more to you. So don't worry about giving what he tell you to give. Especially if you got it, you know you got it. And he knows you have it. Okay. And this is the first John five and 20. And we know that the son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true in his son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Ba ba ba, ba ba ba. Praise God. I am. Really loving these scriptures on today. Please go and read them again. Galatians 2 and 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in, uh, live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh my God. So that is the greatest precious gift that we could ever receive. And, and listen, he gave us his son. Why can't you just give your life back to him and live the life? I said, Lord, I want to live a life poured out to you, God. 
I want to live a life poured out to you. Hallelujah. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but the Christ, the Christ who lives in me. Okay? So we don't live to ourselves or for ourselves. Our lives are in Christ Jesus. Now, once we have been washed, cleansed, made new again, and listen, you need to get baptized as well, okay? It says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So his Holy Spirit will come in and dwell and live in you and lead you in the way that you should go, okay? And the life I now live in the flesh, by I lived by it says, by faith in the Son of God. We are saved through Christ Jesus by faith, okay? Who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay? Thank you, Lord. So it's by his grace and mercy and all that. We're saved. We're saved by faith. And I'm so, so excited. And I'm so, so happy. And I pray that you all jump on board and live the life. Listen, we don't know what's going to happen. We This world is so dark right now. It's time to really, fully, truly give your lives over to God. Live for God, okay? And if you are needing to renew your life, you want to be renewed, you want to be revived, God will do that for you. Ask him to revive you, you know, to, 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 to bring you back. Because a lot of y'all have walked away, backslidden, and you need to come back. He says, return to me. Hallelujah. He won't leave you, but sometimes we leave him. And he's telling you today to come back to him and give your life to Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And live the life. Repent of your sins. Repent today. Confess your sins. Ask him to come into your heart. And a lot of these scriptures, hold on, let me see. Let me go back. Um... See, I'm trying to go through here and see something real quick. So, and also remain in God. It's not enough to just give our lives over to God, but we must remain in Him. That means we don't leave Him, we stay in Him. This is a whole life change. This is a whole life, um, this is our life. This is our life, you know. This is where we live every day, day by day, every day. Not on Sundays only, not on Wednesdays only, not when only the doors of the church open. But we listen, he's in our hearts. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So he's in our hearts. You know, we are the church. Okay. Sure, just listen. We are to be kind to one another, loving to one another. We are to have peace. We are to be peacemakers. All of that. Okay? Build that on today. I'm going to go ahead and end this podcast. I'm trying to see some. Hold on just one moment. Uh, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, so find you a, a local church as well. But you know what? Pray to God first. Have him to lead you in which way, you know, you should go. Visit some churches and see, you know, and, and ask God, Lord, is this where you want to place me, God? So many times we go out here and we do things on our own. And God is not even calling us to be right there at that church or or whatever. So this is why we have to seek his face daily. 
so we can, you know, and, and we have his spirit in us so we can hear what he is saying to us. Sometimes we need to get along with God and just turn everything off and just be quiet. Be quiet and sit in his presence and let him speak to us. That's the only way we're going to really hear him. Let him speak to us. Okay? I love you guys. Be blessed. And listen, I will, until next time, on Kingdom Business, you all have a blessed, absolute, oh my gosh, blessed, beautiful day. You know, and thank him. Thank him throughout the day. Thank him. Because he let us wake up this morning. He let us see a brand new day. He let us be in his presence. He let us be refreshed. He let us see our families again. Those are gifts that he, he's given us. I love you. Be blessed.